Two big wins on the West Coast set up another big week for the Minnesota Wild, who find themselves right in the thick of the playoff conversation. We'll talk about the Wrecker line continuing their absolute torrid pace. A couple of pivotal Central Division collisions this week. And the approach to the trade deadline, which is already coming up next week. All that and more coming up on today's episode of Locked on Wild. You're locked on wild. Your daily podcast on the Minnesota wild. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hey, this is Brandon Duham and this is Locked On Wild. What is happening, everybody? Welcome into another episode of Locked On Wild, your daily Minnesota Wild podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you, as always, for making Locked On Wild your first listen each and every day. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube and your favorite podcast platform so you don't miss out on any new episodes throughout the week. Today's episode of Locked On Wild is brought to you by Sleeper. Download the Sleeper app and use promo code LOCKEDONNHL to get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. See Sleeper's terms of use for details. On today's episode of Locked on Wild, Alex McLeddy joins us to recap a couple of big wins over the weekend against Edmonton and Seattle. We'll take a look at where things currently stand in the Western Conference playoff picture as the Wild find themselves right in the thick of the playoff push, which means that we're definitely not going to be pulling our hair out over these next couple of months. Just, yeah. just going to be nice, nice and easy. Nothing to worry about. Yeah, no, it's going to be a roller coaster over these uh, next couple of months. So, uh, Alex, let's dive right in. A couple of nice wins against Edmonton and Seattle and a pretty low stress in the case of the uh, the Seattle game in particular. Uh, pretty much everything that you needed to have go right did. For the Wilds, good special teams, good goaltending, top line continues to dominate. And most importantly of all, some good news on Jewel Erickson Eck after the Seattle game, which means that we are hopefully going to be able to see the wrecker line, as I'm calling them, continue to wreck teams because, boy, oh boy, have they been wrecking teams here for the uh, last several games. Yeah, it's been so much fun to watch Matt Boldy. It's just, it, every time he touches the puck now, you think he's going to score. It's uh, it's awesome, and and Eck is just uh, doing what he does, um, you know, just getting under opponent's skin, and uh, um, his passing has just been elite uh, too. And he's you know parking himself out front of the net on on the power play, and and just jamming away goals too. It's 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 fun and. Uh, um, where would this team be without the top line? <laughs> yeah, I mean, they'd be more of a lottery team. Yeah, so it's uh, that's fun. You know, they are going to be in a battle with Nashville, um, look, it looks like, for that final playoff spot. So, yeah, this is a pivotal week. You play Nashville, too. So, yeah, buckle up, everybody. Um, I wanted to, because I don't think we do it enough, and he just has been so good this season. Uh, I had a listener um, send me a couple of interesting things on Eric Sinek, uh in regards to where he stands statistically in the NHL. And actually, um, Eric Sinek is third, and uh guy's name is Ryan. Um, I will just I, – I, I never know if people want their entire names thrown out there, but, uh, but Ryan sending me um, the fact that Jewel Eric Sinek, is currently third in the entirety of the NHL in uh, expected goals for the season. He's tied with Sam Reinhardt at 31.1 on the season. Just it, just a monster season that Eric Jewel Erickson Eck is having. And you look at him, you look at Kirill Kaprizov, there could not be... Jewel Erickson Eck particularly could not have more responsibility on this Minnesota Wild team. 1C. He is the go to faceoff guy in pretty much every situation that this team has. 
He is the net front guy in the power play. Number one defensive forward on the team, arguably, plays pivotal role on the penalty kill, too. Oh, and he is, he already has 28 goals. He's on pace to just shatter his previous career high. He's already, he's already said it. And he just continues to get better. Like it's, it's insane. I, I talked about, um, you know, Erickson Eck versus Miko Koivu on Friday for a little bit. I might not have been strong enough in Jewel Erickson Eck's favor in that regard because like what can he not do for this right. team the answer is there's nothing he's doing everything for this team and he continues to just he continues to just get it done yeah we we see how important he is to this team i i you know i i continue to say he's the most important player on the team and uh you know without him against dallas in the playoffs last year for you know for the most part it, it was devastating and uh you know, he, without him, I mean, there's zero depth at the center position without him. And so that's why he, he has to, has to do everything. And so, uh, you know, he's elevated his game to another level. Yeah. He's probably got some more offense than, than Miko does, um, you know, and so, which is, which is huge for this wild team as we know. And so, yeah, it's, uh, it, it it's, it's really fun to see, you know, he, He'll always be linked with Brock Besser and, uh, you know, people are, you know, calling him a bust uh, and uh, just like, what is going on here? Um, and he's kind of, he, he's, <laughs> he's thrown that out the window and, uh, but good for Brock Besser too, because people thought like, what, what's going on with this guy? Yeah. Um, and, you know, the weight's off his shoulders too now. Um, and so they're both, uh, they're both thriving in their organizations and, uh, you know, good for the both of them. Might be my single worst take um, of any that I've had on the Minnesota Wild, and there have been plenty, um, that the Jewel Eriks Neck contract was a little rich for my liking back when he was signed to that. Um, now it looks like a more uh, uh, value. <laughs> it's just, you, know, it you, is, go, you can go from that to now it's like, wow, thank God they're not paying him more. Than it's an outrageous bargain. He's playing like an eight. He's playing like an $8 million a year player. And he's making 5.2. But just listen to these projections that continue to continue to go up from that trio for the Wild. Kirill Kaprizov right now is on pace for a 72-game season. He's on pace for 37 goals, 52 assists, 89 points. And considering how he started the season... I think people were expecting him to be in the 50 range, but he just has continued to terrorize the NHL here over the last, honestly, it's been for, you know, the last probably two months. He just continues to just go insane. And then you go to Jewel Erickson Eck, full 82 game season. He's on pace for 40 goals, 37 assists, 76 points, just a monster season. And then Matt Boldy, after one goal, in the first 19 games of the season, he's on pace now for 72 games, 33 goals, 34 assists. And it's uh, how much do you think Dean Evison is just kicking himself for not having deployed that unit um, when this team was struggling as poorly, as badly as they were? Yeah, he's in the past, he was always so reluctant to play Boldy with Kaprizov, but this had to be done. You know, mm -hmm. you put your two most talented forwards together. You know, I, I know Zuccarello is, is very talented too, but uh, it's clearly Boldy and Kaprizov. And so, and then you, you, you stick your best center with them. You know, of course they're going to have success together. And so, yeah, it's, uh, it's worked out better than I'm sure Hines ever imagined. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, it's fun to see. They just, uh, they dominate lines when they're out there. And a lot of the times they're going up against the top lines. I mean, they, they were out against Connor McDavid pretty much the entire game and their line dominated, uh, you know, the top line of, uh, of the Oilers. And Carroll was like immediately the moment that that question was asked, he said, Oh, that's, that's all Jewel Erickson Eck. 
Like that's all Eck doing that against Connor McDavid. It's like he is just it, yeah. He it continues just, to go up against the hardest player on the other team, always, and and it's amazing, you know, the amount of work that he has to do every game. Like you said, the, you mentioned power play, penalty kill, faceoffs. Faceoffs is such a huge, huge deal in the NHL. I mean. You get puck possession. You're gonna, you know, if you get <laughs> get the majority of it uh, on your line, you're gonna, you know, win that uh, when you're out there. And you know, it seems like they win a lot of shifts too. It's mm-hmm. not just about scoring, but uh, just uh, like I said, possession of the puck is is huge. Yeah, and that that line continues to just continues to find ways to and like essentially automatic on the power play. Like that's the other thing too, is those guys, those three have all played together on the power play too. And that, that unit has been. And the guy and the guy quarterbacking it ha- really has no power play experience before, before this. And so he's like, it's just, just amazing with favor. He's like, I get to pass. I get to be on a power play with these three. Yeah. Like, thank you. Okay. I'll take my cookies, uh, yeah. you know, with, you know, this is, yeah. And you throw like, you, you throw Matt Zuccarello in too. And he's like the, he's like the fourth wheel of right. the forwards. And he still is like, he, he's a guy that doesn't love to shoot, but he, he's one of the best passers and <laughs> around for it's sure. Just, well, it the really, game against Seattle. That was crazy. It, it's another one of those situations too, where, John Hines probably just laughed when he got the job and he's like, Eck, Kaprizov, and Boldy. Like when those guys get going, that's that that just does a lot of the work. Now, with those three all being on one line, we have seen a little bit of a uh deck chair situation with the second, the third, and the fourth <laughs> line, which is something that between now and the end of the season is going to need to be figured out. So you you just you need to find some combinations that will are going to be consistent at those spots. And so we'll talk about that as well as a couple of critical central division collisions. Shout out Kevin Falness. Um it, I I just didn't want to do too much alliteration there, but they are critical games. And they are central division collisions. So we'll set the tone for those matchups as well as the rest of the week. And before the end of the show today, we will also discuss what is going to happen at the trade deadline. All that and more coming up as we continue today's episode of Locked on Wild after this. Today's episode of Locked on Wild is brought to you by Camino Consulting. You've heard of our online families and couples course and taken advantage of the Locked on 25% discount running to the end of the month. But what about the live seminars? In both sport and business, the challenge in differentiating candidates and recruits is an endless battle. Everyone can demonstrate their measurables and qualifications, but we all know it is the intangibles that matter when those things are similar. Contact Camino Consulting for for their team and management seminars to get a peek behind the curtain and watch your next recruiting class or hiring group become one of the most effective you've ever seen, both because you identified the right candidates and because you've learned how to communicate and motivate them in accord with their own preferences. But you aren't in business management or working for a team? We pay referrals, make some money making your workplace and favorite teams better. Every group works together better at the end of year one than week one. So contact Camino Consulting at CaminoConsulting.ca and get on the fast track to understanding. That's CaminoConsulting.ca. CaminoConsulting.ca. Welcome back to today's episode of Locked on Wild. Once again, we thank you for making Locked on Wild your first listen each and every day. If you have a question or topic you'd like to have answered on an episode of Locked on Wild, or if you would like to be a uh, guest host on the show, send an email to LockedOnWild at gmail.com and uh, we will work 
either of those possibilities into a future episode. Alex McLeddy joining us here today. And Alex, let's start by taking a look at uh, the rest of the lineup. Because you got your top line. And yes, having a wrecker line can get you through the regular season. But come postseason time, it just becomes the focus. Like whoever you would play if the Wild get there, it just becomes the focus of the opponent is, okay, we got to shut this line down. If we can disrupt them, then we'll take our chances with the rest of the lineup. We saw Matt Zuccarello, Marcus Johansson, and Ryan Hartman get an opportunity against Seattle. Marcus Johansson scored a goal. Matt Zuccarello had a million assists. Ryan Hartman had uh, an, an assist as well. And so maybe it was a step in the right direction to finding some combination that sticks because whether it be Marco Rossi, Matt Zuccarello, Marcus Johansson, it, it just, there has not been as much click with that second or third or fourth line as there has with the top line. Yeah, I mean this the second line has to figure it out if they're going to be uh, if if they're going to be playing Vancouver in the playoffs, which would, you know, if they were to make it, you they're going to have to need they're going to need Zuccarello to have, you know, some capable line mates out there because mm -hmm. I mean, he for the most part against Dallas last year in the playoffs was in Invisible. I mean, he had that one game where he had a really fan phenomenal game where he scored. But I mean, he's he's going to need some capable line mates. I don't know if they fully trust Marco Rossi. Uh, it just it just seems like I don't know if they 100% trust him right now. And so yeah. it seems like they're going to go back to the Ryan Hartman. Uh, uh, well, they're in the top six, uh, but then they also don't. It seems like Heinz doesn't fully trust his game right now either. So yeah, it's it's crazy. And like, um, you know, I think it was brilliant what you pointed out too. And this is a guy that uh, you know um, takes a lot of flack. Uh, is Marcus Johansson? Uh, it seemed like you know someone talked to him before the Seattle game because he came out firing against. Yeah against Seattle and gets gets that goal. Um, it was probably a shot that Decord probably should have put it, probably should have stopped, but uh, um, it went in regardless. And so uh, that was a goal that the Wild really needed because you know they gave up that quick one. And so um, from from there, the you know the Wild just absolutely dominated the Kraken. And Johansson nearly had he nearly had the wraparound goal too. Yeah. So he was just looking to he was looking to push the issue more, which I think is all we have ever asked. Right. You can't have yeah. Every game can't be a cardio night, so you can't it, you can't be going to Lifetime Fitness every night with Freddie. And this, folks, this is why this is why like I get frustrated as much as I do is because we're not setting the bar. Like we're not setting the bar crazy high. We're not no. asking for like a hat trick no. or a five it, it, it point just, night. It's got to be more than just one shot on goal. You know? Yes. It's yeah. like when if you're you in that get, elevated of a role. If you get opportunities, especially in the top six, the way that this team is structured, those top two lines need to score. The third line is your defense, your physical, your you, you, all of that other, all those other things. That's what your third line brings. And then the fourth line has always been the the high energy kind of quick spark line. And so if 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 you're going to put the scoring on two lines, you gotta have two lines that are capable of scoring. And right. it just I, yeah, I but... just would rather see guys in those situations letting it rip than having the opportunity to walk up to the goalie with nobody between you and the goalie and opting to try to force a pass to the other side of the ice like that vividly remember that highlight for Johansson and just he, there was nobody between him and the goalie and instead of just walking up and trying to get a shot right in front pass it to the other side of the net it's like 
I mean, because you look at Nashville, uh, I, and Nyquist scored tonight. I think he's got 15 goals for that Nashville team. I mean, that's, you know, uh, yeah, he's just playing phenomenal for, for them. And uh, um, I, I don't know where they'd be without him. Obviously, they have Phil Forsberg, but Nyquist has been phenomenal. And uh, Ryan O'Reilly, who's just a pest, um, you know, he continues to just play brilliant uh, brilliantly as he ages too it's uh yeah it's uh it's gonna be a battle with, with nashville so you've got the pr so here's here's what you have coming up this week and in the comments please fire up what you think the wild how you think the wild will do this week record wise they host carolina then it's at nashville at st louis and they finish the week Home against San Jose. So you got four games this week, two on the road, two at home. The Wild had the, the Wild beats Carolina like two weeks ago. <laughs> A surprise game. Like I, I don't think anybody expected. <laughs> no. Like once once the Wild lost that uh, that game to Tampa Bay to start that road trip, it's like Oh, oh boy. boy, this yeah. is this is and that was an ugly Tampa Tampa Bay game too. That oh. was just oh, just ugly. That's just the worst way to start a road trip like that. And then the Wild rattled off two straight wins against yeah. Florida and dominated, yeah, against Carolina. So <laughs> you tell me the the two games that matter the most. Like Carolina is an Eastern Conference team. You need the points, but if you lose that game. That one doesn't mean as much to me as the two in the middle do. I feel 100%. like you have to, have to win both. Yes, and and the the one against Nashville is is, is I mean, mm -hmm. I mean that's such a huge gigantic swing, uh, you know. Either way, yeah, it's uh, that that's one you have to absolutely have. And what happened in the last matchup against the Predators is the Wilds went into the third period. With a one nothing lead, and then all of a sudden, the next thing you know, it's three to one. Yeah, it like, just the wheels fell off quick. Yeah, it was that was a tough one. It's a composure test. Th these have all these are all pressure cooker tests for this wild team that now has put themselves in position to be in the thick of the playoff race. But the and this is not this is not just us saying this. Right, like you look nationally. TNT crew would be talking about this if the game was on TNT. Uh, every every other show is these are the games that are test your metal games. Like if you if you are if you are a playoff caliber team, these are the ones you you need to win. Teams right around you in the standings. So go go grab them. Yeah, and. <laughs> It's it's something about this you know this time of the year just it was just like last season with uh, the matchups with St Louis yeah <laughs> it, it it's gonna you know it's gonna be a crazy game uh, most likely Bennington will be playing uh, and uh, you know he's just had some crazy antics recently too uh, you know the, he gave up what seven six or seven goals against Detroit uh, it was just. Absolutely Ugh. madness. Um, he was sticking his uh, goalie stick out and hitting guys. Uh, just uh, you know, he's a he's a guy as we clearly know that. Uh, um, if you get in his head, he'll just let in multiple goals at a time, or just you know try to get, try to stir stir the pot. Um, and uh, yeah, St. St. Louis is such a weird team to figure out. They at at points they they seem like they're just going to give up. Um, but you know, then they go out and beat the Islanders, um, and score like, that was crazy. Three goals in under a minute. That was, that was crazy. And then they play Detroit and, you know, just get run out of the building on national TV. Um, yeah, it was just a, a weird, weird weekend for them. And, uh, you know, it's like, do they want to be in the playoffs or not? And, uh, yeah, that's going to be an interesting to, team to see if they sell off or not. Um, and then, you know, at some point, uh, as we uh, as we know here in the state of Minnesota, watching Jimmy Snuggerud play with the Gophers, um, you know, if the Gophers get eliminated, um, I think they want to get Jimmy into the NHL right away. So we'll see if that's kind of their, like, trade deadline uh, addition. Um, 
just looking at the two goalies that you're likely to face in those two games. So you got <laughs> Bennington, who is three and three in February. He in two of his last three starts, it just <laughs> Just absolutely Jekyll and Hyde. He right. gave up four against Nashville and lost. He shut out the Islanders, stopped <laughs> all 38 shots that he faced, and then he gave up four goals in under a period against the Detroit Red Wings. Nuts. Like, yeah, it's like, I don't know. He's such a hard guy to figure out. When he's on top of his game, he can be pretty impressive, but, you know, he just, you know, if he lets one goal, you know, one goal can get him off as like he thinks about it and then just does, you know, outrageous stuff. Like I said, you know, you know, tries to take his goalie stick and hit somebody. And, you know, it's just it's it's bizarre. Or like clapping back <laughs> at the Minnesota Wild bench, even though he just gave up like a fifth goal. Right. And like, what are you doing, Jordan? running at going after Ryan Hartman and then Mark Andre Fleury's like if you're gonna start it you better finish it. <laughs> like, <laughs> just, just unhinged. And then you've got uh you've got the dependable UC Soros who right. he is four and two this month with a three point zero zero goals against average. Started the uh started the month off giving up three plus goals in three straight games, including four goals in 20 minutes against the Dallas stars. But now ever since beat the St. Louis blues, beat the Los Angeles Kings and beat the San Jose sharks. He's given up two or fewer goals in his last three starts, but UC Saros is beatable this year. And so it, this is a situation, too, where the pedigree of these goalies is one thing. But if you press the attack, like Joey Decord, great statistics this year, good right. goalie. And the Wilds just refused to back down, and they ended up chasing him. You very well could if you attack properly you very well could hang a crooked number on both of these guys. Yeah, and Saros is, as we know, he's the smallest goalie in the NHL. And so, uh, you know, you go up high on him, you have a really good chance at, at scoring. And uh, um, anywhere low, he he's phenomenal, you know, and uh, he can't <laughs> – uh, size is one thing he can't, uh, you know, it's just that's, that's, that's who he is. And so yeah. – uh, you know, he has to be very good with his angles and, uh, and, uh, but he's, like you said, he's very, he's a gettable goalie. And, uh, uh, you know, this, you know, that's a national team that you can score a bunch on. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's, it's just absolutely crucial getting out just off to good starts for the, for this wild team too. And, uh, you know, they did give up that goal early to Seattle, but they're, you, I mean, we all, we all saw the game. They have, so much more talent than the Seattle team. And mm -hmm. what was, I think the most impressive thing is um, they kept the pedal to the metal the entire game too. They just did not let, you know, um, Seattle back into that game. And that's, uh, that was crucial too, because Seattle is a weird team fig to figure out too. Are they going to be selling off, uh, off the farm? Uh, you know, they could be joining uh, um, Arizona here, you know, just in going, full tank you know so uh, it's uh, uh it'll be interesting to see what happens with seattle at the deadline seattle is last year's calgary flames yeah where it's like if they can get you to overtime they'll take the point and they'll probably <laughs> lose right but the thing that i enjoyed most about that seattle game was if you would have told me one of those two teams had just played the night before like if i didn't know and you said you know, yeah, one of these teams played last night. I would not have guessed that it was the Wild. Yeah, and and not only did the Wild were they on the back end of a back to back, and then traveling to um, Seattle, they had to play Edmonton, and yep. who out shot doubly outshot them, and you had to exert exert a ton of energy. I mean, trying to shut down McDavid the entire game. It. Uh, you know, at points in that third period, Edmonton was just absolutely 
buzzing around, you know, wasn't it like 15 to three on shots at one point? So yep. that was, that was absolutely insane. And they, you know, they held on and, uh, uh, you know, you travel to Seattle and that's a, um, that's a tough arena to play in. Uh, um, I mean, that they beat Vancouver there in their previous game who has the best record in the NHL. So that yeah, was, it was weird um, um, seeing Vancouver lose to them. So, uh, and then, and then Vancouver ends up beating Boston. So, you know, this league, as we talk about this, it's such, it's been such a weird season. Uh, you, you know, you try to like forecast games and, you know, goes the complete opposite of how you think it's going to happen sometimes. I'm, I'm going to use the Leo DiCaprio in uh, Django Unchained quote. You have my curiosity in this 7-1-1 one one stretch. If you can beat Nashville and St. Louis, you'll have my attention. Oh, yeah, about 100%. And so. it, but uh, it puts the rest of the division on notice too, for sure. Yeah. Um, let's talk a little bit about the approach at the deadline because it seems like, and this will be much to the dislike of, of many, that the Wild are in position to potentially buy, but we're going to kind of talk through what would have to happen if you were to add a piece. We'll discuss that as we finish Today's episode of Locked on Wild after this. Today's episode of Locked on Wild is also brought to you by Sleeper. We are headed to the final few months of the season, and you can still win big by playing daily fantasy hockey on Sleeper, the official daily fantasy app of the Locked on NHL Network. Sleeper is our number one choice for daily fantasy sports, especially daily fantasy hockey. Because with Sleeper, you can win 100 times your cash in daily fantasy hockey contests. All you have to do is pick whether elite wild players on the biggest heater of their lives, Kirill Kaprizov, Jewel Eriksson Ek, and Matt Boldy. You just have to pick whether they will best their Sleeper projections for things like goals, assists, saves, plus, minus, or more in a given game. You pick whether they go above or below, more or less. It's that easy. You can put your entire lineup together in less than 60 seconds. And if you're a fan of other sports, and who isn't, you can play daily fantasy NFL, NBA, Major League Baseball, and even college football on Sleeper. Use promo code LOCKEDONNHL and you'll get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. That's code LOCKEDONNHL. See Sleeper's terms of use for details and locational availability. Final segment of today's episode of Locked on Wild. Once again, we thank you for making Locked on Wild your first listen each and every day. Just wrapping some things up here for today's episode. Alex, the trade deadline is next week. And so for the Minnesota Wilds, looked for the last month or so that they were going to be sellers. This stretch after the All-Star break, I think, has probably moved them off that level. But here's, here's the thing. If you're going to buy, it feels like at this point there has to be something done either defensively or offensively or both because you've got you've got a log jam <laughs> in both spots and so if you are going to add somebody to try to fill that other third pairing defenseman spot or maybe add a uh, bottom six forward to the mix you got too many bodies and so some one of those defensemen is going to have to go whether it be Mermis or Goligoski or Merrill. And from the forward group, like you've got a couple of guys. You've got Mason Shaw. You also have Murat Huznadinov, who could... There are a bunch of different possibilities of what could happen with him. He could sign, burn that first year of eligibility for his ELC, and be here like in quick order. So it feels like there has to be some hedge trimming for the um, 
for the bottom six. Yeah, I mean, Murat might be your deadline guy or type move, you know, uh, just kind of like I said, like with St. Louis, you know, you know, potentially adding Jimmy Snuggerud when the, when the gopher season is, is done. Um, yeah, just, uh, I don't know. I mean, and Declan Chisholm, he's, <laughs> we were clamoring to, for him to play and uh, he's been absolutely Phenomenal, phenomenal. He's been great. Yeah, moving the puck and uh, on the power play too. It's just, uh, you know, he, he he's showing that you know skill, the you know the potential that that he had, and it's it's fun to see him actually get NHL games now. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, you have Pat Maroon, you know, sitting there too. That's you know eventually going to be coming back, and you know. Do teams want a damaged asset? Uh, you know, they're going to have to, you know, that's going to be interesting to play out. Um, it's kind of like Pittsburgh with Jake Gensel. It's like you could be trading, you know, hopefully that guy is, you know, 100% uh, at some point, uh, but you just don't know when you're trading for a guy that's been been injured. Um, so that That's a guy that, uh, you know, has won multiple cups um, and uh, is a type of, person that teams love to have in, in the playoffs so you know he's going to draw a ton of interest and then you have um you have two guys in brandon duham and connor dewar that don't have contracts with this team going in the next season and so those are two guys that you could um, easily try to move and maybe do a you know a player for player swap instead of a you know uh, trading them for for draft picks, you know, if you're going to try to, you know, get a, you know, uh, another b- bottom six uh, type of of player, Th- that's only those are the only type of guys that you can really, tr- you know, trade out uh, as far as forwards, um, and so unless they just <laughs> unless they decide to try to trade Adam Beckman for something, you know, it's you know who's leading the Iowa Wild in, in goals, but uh, yeah, I just yeah, I don't. Ninety percent of those goals have come in the last like two weeks. I right. Wonder, he's, I wonder why. Yeah, I mean, he's showing that you know either trade me or um, you know move me up when you when you do move a Pat Maroon or, um, but uh, yeah, poor Mason Shaw too. It's like he's getting the Adam Beckman treatment now, like call up and just sit in the press box. But yeah. uh, uh, I don't know what when when they are thinking they're going to get him in, uh, you know, unless a move is made. Yeah, I uh, I don't know. What I do know is of wild defensemen this year, mm-hmm. Declan Chisholm is currently fourth in on-ice expected goals against per 60 minutes at 2.91. He is behind... He is behind Alex Goligoski and John Merrill, who are somehow number one and number two. That makes no sense. Yeah. Zach Bogosian is number three. Declan Chisholm is number four. Um, I was trying to I was trying to find a stat in which I could rave about what Declan Chisholm has done, but honestly, like he just he has been better than I expected he would be defensively. Like in addition to everything that he brings offensively, he's been serviceable defensively, and he just he seems like a guy that is just like he moves well, and uh, mm-hmm. you know, uh, Merrill and, uh, and Goligoski aren't the fleetest of foot, and so it's no, uh, yeah, it's so I mean, it's it's they needed another type of defenseman like him uh, to fill the the Jared Spurgeon type of of role on this team, and it, he's he's doing an admirable job of, of doing that. And, you know, he's had to step out, step up now with, uh, with Bogosian out. Um, and, uh, you know, who knows when they're going to get him back. Um, you hope- Sounds like hopefully for tomorrow's game against Carolina. Okay. So that, you know, that's huge, especially Carolina is a you know pretty physical team. And so, mm-hmm. yeah, it's, uh, you know, it'd be nice to, to have him, uh, you know, play against the, against the, you know, that type of team for sure. And of course, Nashville and in, in the, in the blues and San Jose, it's a, it's a train wreck. So, but they're you know, so for, bad. Yeah, it's, uh, uh, yeah, you have to feel, feel bad for that. Uh, those fans of that, of, of that team. <laughs> um, the like i i'm not selling it enough at and it's funny because 
they are desperately trying to outmaneuver Chicago. Right. Chicago's not well the, Chicago's not relenting. The the craziest thing that I keep seeing with San Jose is, you know, just with the um with the trade deadline coming, um, teams are hesitant to take anything from San Jose <laughs> because you know they just they don't want to you know add someone from that you know that team that you know uh they don't want to add to their team of you know just the culture that San Jose has, has right now and um you know and and without uh, uh I mean they have Tomas Hurdle and um and Logan Couture their two best players they're they've been hurt um so uh you know they don't have really think anything else really that you would want off that team and uh you know they have a bunch of former wild guys on there too so yeah it's uh yeah, it's uh it's a it's a mess that Mike Greer needs to figure out here soon in the last 10 games listen to this for the wins that the San Jose Sharks have accumulated in the last 10 New York Rangers Seattle Kraken Los Angeles Kings and the Calgary Flames. Yeah, it's uh yeah, it's it's weird. They What is uh, happening? Yeah, it's <laughs> you can't take them lightly. But yeah, they have random lineups. They have got a lot of the nights you take a look at the box score and you're like who are some of these guys? I've never heard of, them. you know, it's uh it it's uh it's crazy and they have Capo in that there. Um or Mackenzie Blackwood which is you know, it's uh, yeah, it's an interesting goalie goalie duo duo there, and David Quinn is uh, an intense head coach. Um, yeah, it's I don't know, it's uh, it's a weird team. Uh, you know, they'll eventually uh, <laughs> they have uh, an amazing prospect, Will Smith. Uh, what a name! Uh, you know, <laughs> um, uh, as uh, as their top uh, uh, prospect, he's having a phenomenal year and with Boston College um they would love to add Celebrini with him uh but uh Chicago's the Kembe Matumbo wait <laughs> wait they've been uh, out out tanking uh, uh San Jose so they're hoping they can put Bedard with Celebrini it's uh yeah well yeah, we want we want we want Celebrini to stay out of the west but uh, I think he's destined to to be uh, in in the Western Conference, the way Anaheim is is playing too is straight yeah. awful too. It's uh, yeah, one of one of those three teams will probably get Celebrini. I hate it so much. Or Iserman, who's uh, you know going to be at Boston University too. So. He's not a bad. He's not a bad <laughs> consolation, consolation prize, prize yeah. either. Yeah, it's so. uh, yeah, it's going to be you know this is. You know, it, this is the draft. I, I mean, mm -hmm. this you know they uh, everybody's been saying that this draft is phenomenal talent. Um, you know, so it's uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting. Uh, uh, you know, in uh, in a couple months too with with draft steam. Mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. We'll find out <laughs> how how funny of a spin would that be if the Bill Guerin buying. At the deadline is Declan Chisholm and Murat who's Nadina. Yeah, yeah, it's you know that's a, a sneaky way. I mean, uh, of adding to your team is just uh, within your own system. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah, we're gonna see with with other teams like I'm like I mentioned with Jimmy. Um, so yeah, well, uh, you know, and adding uh, another Russian, I don't think Krill would <laughs> uh, say no. I, I don't. I don't want that. Anything you know? but that. Yeah, anything but that. Another countryman. So, uh, you know, we've been uh, uh, we've been looking forward to him. Uh, you know, joining the the Wild for a long time now, and this is a time where they could could potentially do it. Uh, you know, Bill Guerin was on with Russo um, uh, recently on K Fan and. Um, they kind of want to do what's best for him, you know, so, you know, which is, which is great to see. And, uh, you know, it seems like they're in constant communication with those guys in Russia. It's a, mm -hmm. it's a hard, hard, hard to figure out because they have, uh, they have so much pressure on, you know, staying there in the KHL. Um, and so, uh, you know, he seems, he seems to be ready. I mean, he was on the worst KHL team, so you can't, 
um, you can't take into anything with with that as far as points wise when you're yeah. when you're on the worst team in the, in the league. Um, so, uh, you know, getting him onto this wild team and at least giving him a chance to see, you know, how he could handle NHL competition. I think uh, I think you do it. Yeah, I I'm right with you. Like, mm-hmm. but the the thing here's here's the caveat to this. Yeah, if you do burn a year of that ELC to get him right. here. He's got to play. Yeah, he, okay. he can't. No, he can't. He can't get the Adam Beckman treatment. That is just yeah. insanely stupid. Right. To burn a year of an ELSD and to have him ride the bench. Like, I think if you bring him, he's got to play. I think if he signs, then that looks that that makes that that's a sign that they trade a Maroon or a Duhame or a doer to open up a spot in the mm-hmm. lineup. Um, yeah. You know, they got to move. They right. got to move somebody to free up a spot. So right. time will tell. Uh, it's going to be a big week and we will of course, keep you up to date throughout all of it here at locked on wild. So make sure to hit the like button before you head out for the day. Make sure to subscribe if you have not yet already. So you don't miss out on any new episodes throughout the week. We'll have you covered through uh, every game this week, as well as uh, gearing you into the trade deadline, too. Working on some uh, exciting plans for next week as well. So keep an eye out for that and uh, enjoy what should be another crazy week of Minnesota Wilds hockey. And and Wild fans, think think in this for some early games, too. We don't have... (laughs) (sighs) I mean the the Seattle and, and Edmonton those are always tough to to stay up for the entire game. So thank goodness we get some earlier games. Yeah, I always love wrapping up doing my content at three in the morning on a Sunday. <laughs> right. Yes. Thank so. you everybody for listening and, and yeah. supporting us. It's uh, it's awesome and uh, you know kudos to the people watching and listening to us from Moscow, Russia. It's uh, it's amazing seeing you guys in the comments and and thank you for for doing that we got norway we've got ireland we've got uh lockdown wild international so yes. appreciate everybody tuning in and uh we'll keep you up to date on all things minnesota wild because we are your daily minnesota wild podcast so make sure to tune in throughout the week we've got new episodes every monday through friday as part of the locked on podcast network